There have been many F1 teams who saw success in their first few seasons in Formula 1. Braun GP is the most well-known case of quick success, however there are a handful of other teams who have done the same thing. Technically, the Alfa Romeo Works team saw success in its first Formula 1 season in 1950 when the championship first started, but the team I want to discuss here didn't need the pullout of a major works operation nor the inauguration of a racing series to win on debut. This is the story of Walter Wolff Racing. Walter Wolff came to notoriety when he funded Frank Williams' first F1 enterprise. Before the Williams team that we know today came along, there was Frank Williams Racing Cars. In 1969, after success as a team owner in Formula 2, Frank opened up his own Formula 1 team with his protégé Piers Courage as the driver of the Brabham BT26A. Piers scored two second places in 1969 and his career was looking up, but he died in the 1970 Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort due to a mechanical failure as his car failed to navigate the tunnel Oost Corner. The Frank Williams racing car team never really recovered from Courage's death. In the next five seasons, they only got one podium courtesy of Jacques Lafitte. In 1975, the team's financial difficulties became obvious as they fielded 10 different drivers across the 15-race season, hiring paid drivers just to keep the team afloat. This is where Walter Wolf comes in. The Canadian businessman bought 60% of Frank Williams' team before the start of the 1976 season, renaming the team to Wolf Williams, but keeping Frank on board as team manager. Future legendary car designer Harvey Postlethwaite was brought in as well, and the team bought the assets of a now-defunct Hesketh team. The team didn't really improve results-wise in 1976, and at the end of the year, Walter Wolf bought the rest of the team, renaming it to Walter Wolf Racing, while Frank Williams was fired and he went off to start his own team with Patrick Head, a team that continues today as the modern Williams Racing outfit. Walter Wolf's team continued into 1977 and had only the one chassis. A nice-looking black and gold paint scheme adorned the car of Jody Schechter. Powered by a Ford Cosworth DFV, Schechter qualified 11th in the first race of the season in Argentina, nearly two seconds off a pulsar to James Hunt. Schechter started 10th after Gunnar Nilsson didn't start, then the race itself was an attritional one. Only three of the nine drivers who started ahead of Schechter actually finished the race, although Mario Andretti, who was one of those drivers, dropped out with three laps left due to wheel bearing failure. Partly due to the retirements ahead of him and partly down to skill, Schechter won the race by 43 seconds in the Walter Wolf team's first F1 race. Yes, it was technically Frank Williams racing cars before it was Walter Wolf racing, but people always say Braun GP won their first race under the same principle. After an engine failure in the second race of the season in Brazil, Schechter finished second in his home race at Kyle Army, then finished third in the next two rounds in Long Beach and Harama. After five rounds, he was leading the Drivers' Championship in a one-car effort, as well as being second to Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship. It couldn't get any better from here, surely. Except it could. At the next race in Monaco, Schechter won with fastest lap, extending his championship lead to seven points in an era where a win was only worth nine. However, he would then enter a dip in form as Jody retired in all of the next four races, dropping him to joint second in the Drivers' Championship and Wolf to fourth in the Constructors' Championship. He got pole position and then second place in the race in Hockenheim, but retired again in Austria before finishing third in Zandvoort. Another retirement in Monza was followed by third in Watkins Glen, then Schechter took his last win of the year in the penultimate round of the season at Mossport. He finished a lowly 10th in the last race of the season in Fuji after running well early in the race. He finished the season second to Niki Lauda in the Drivers' Championship, and despite running just the one car, the team finished fourth in the Constructors. Admittedly, they were helped by the fact that only the highest placed car for a team in each race would accrue points towards the Constructors' Championship in this era, but considering reliability rates of the year, it was definitely better to have two cars than one. In the Constructors' Championship, the Wolf team had as many retirements as all three teams ahead of them in the Constructors combined, so it was clearly the lack of a second car that disadvantaged them. As the ground effect era of car design came on strong in 1978, despite Schechter clearly being a talented driver, he finished 10th in the opening round in Argentina, the race he won the year before. After three retirements in the following three races, he got third in Monaco before the new ground effect car from Postlethwaite came in at Zolder. Schechter retired in Zolder, then got fourth in Spain, then retired again in Sweden. A sixth place in Paul Ricard was followed by another retirement in Brands Hatch. Then, Jody took his second podium of the year in Hockenheim before getting his seventh retirement of the season in round 12 in Austria. After two 12 places consecutively in Zandvoort and Monza, the team entered two chassis for the last two races of the season in the USA and Canada, with Bobby Rahal driving the second chassis.
While Schechter picked up two podiums with third in Watkins Glen and second in Montreal, Ray Hall finished 12th in Watkins Glen before retiring in the Canadian race due to fuel system problems. In the team's second season, they had no wins, four podiums courtesy of Schechter and a finishing rate of only just over a half, with Schechter finishing 7th in the driver's standings and Wolf finishing 5th in the constructors. Admittedly, it wasn't the worst decline in the world as the team still had some good results that year. However, the team was a far cry from its first season form. Going into 1979, they would lose a talented Schechter who would win the title with Ferrari that year. However, they did find a past champion to replace the soon-to-be champion. James Hunt joined the Wolf team off the back of a mostly unsuccessful 1978 season driving for McLaren. He obviously saw the one-car outfit which ran a tight ship much like the Hesketh team which put him on the Formula 1 map and thought he could replicate that success with Wolf. His 1979 stint with Wolf though didn't provide any success. He retired from both of the opening two rounds of the season, then got 8th in South Africa before retiring from the next three races on the bounce. Heading into the Monaco Grand Prix, the venue he made his debut at six years earlier, Hunt told one of his mechanics before the race that if he were to nudge the barrier while in second gear and apply a squirt of throttle, the drive shaft would break. Knowing this, it's maybe easier to figure out James's motivation to continue racing when he retired early on in the race due to drive shaft failure, retiring from F1 altogether on the spot. Hunt was gone, but the team signed up a new young driver, Keki Rosberg, to fill his seat. In the remaining eight races of 1979, Rosberg only finished one race, his first race for the team in France. He retired from six other races and didn't qualify for the one in Canada. To think this team won three races two seasons ago and even got podiums the year before, seeing them go from those highs to a 13% finishing rate and no points was disappointing. Walter Wolf was obviously disillusioned with how his team was performing and at the end of the season he shut it down. He had been the spearhead of its success but saw it through its downfall. Walter Wolf had burst onto the scene with a future champion getting podiums and wins, gracefully gliding across the rough pond that is Formula 1. However, it went from a newcomer, to a race winner, to a podium finisher, to failing to qualify in just three seasons. Many teams have had off years or off periods, for example Ferrari in 1980, McLaren in the mid-90s or Williams since 2019, but they've all pulled through. Maybe Walter Wolf Racing wouldn't have gone anywhere if Walter Wolf kept it going, but he had the right tools in place and the right people around him. He had one of the best car designers of the era in Harvey Postlethwaite and he also hired three drivers who were champions either before or after their time with the Wolf team. Fuck it, if you ignore Bobby Ray Hall's two race stint, every single full-time driver the team hired was a champion. I think that's a distinction no other team has in the history of Formula 1, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Walter Wolff went from amazing success and second place in the driver's standings only behind Nicky Lauda to only finishing two races in a season in just two years. It's such a shame to document their downfall, but with that, I think that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you made it this far, please tell me topics, drivers, or team stories you'd like me to cover in the future. Also, you can click on one of the cards on the screen to either watch another video of mine, or to go to my channel itself to pick a video out on your own. Also, I'm not sorry for the shameless plug, nor am I sorry for asking you all to like the video and subscribe to my channel for future channel content. I've been Nedzo, and for now, bye!